Are your fingers tired of typing in two dimensions? So are mine. Watch this tutorial and you can type in three. Hello and welcome. I'm Derek Elliott from Dirk.com and today in this Blender tutorial we're going to be talking about how to add text in Blender, make it 3D, and do all that good stuff. So let's get started. What I have here is my basic scene with a camera, an area lamp, and a seamless backdrop. I want to hold on to those, but I'm going to move them out of the way by pressing M and moving them to this layer. Now that we have our clean slate here, let's go ahead and add some text. So just like with any other object in Blender, I'm going to press Shift A and add text. That's the button we're going to use, obviously. And now to edit this text, we're going to go into edit mode. Now, this is not the standard edit mode. It's a little bit different. When we press tab, it brings up a cursor here that we can use just like we would in any other text editing software. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to whatever I want. Um, for this, we're just going to change it to tutorial since this is a tutorial. Now make sure you uh, spell everything absolutely right. Uh, you wouldn't want to get too far down into the process and realize something has been misspelled. Now, the next thing I might want to do is make this 3D because this is a 3D program, of course. We don't want to just leave this at Microsoft Word status. So what are we going to do? We're going to extrude this. Now, we would normally do that by going into edit mode and pressing E. Ooh, that doesn't work. What are we going to do? We're going to go over here into this F tab font or something like that that has appeared. And there's an extrude value. And that's what we're going to use to make this 3D. So that's looking pretty good. Pick something you like. Not too thick, not too thin. Looking decent. Um, now I want, I'm going to end up using my seamless backdrop. So I want to rotate this on the x-axis to kind of bring it upright. So I'm going to press R to rotate. X to rotate along the x-axis and then type in 90 to rotate at 90 degrees so that's looking pretty good and now over here in my camera view I'm just gonna I'm gonna kind of move that over there like that so that it's a little more centered so that's about it the next thing you're probably gonna want to do is change the font blender starts you off with this basic um, blender font it really looks fine but if you're ever gonna be posting your work on a blender forum or something like that people will recognize that as the blender font and you might stand out, look a little fancier if you use a different font. So to do that, we're just going to go over here back in this font tab and we're going to open a new font from file. So I'm going to press that there and then you'll need to navigate to wherever the fonts are located on your system. On a Windows machine, you can press C to go to your C drive and then Windows and then fonts and select whatever you like. I'm going to use this font called Roboto, Roboto, something like that. It's by Google. I like it. It's what my uh, logo uses, and it's pretty cool. But you shouldn't use it because I still want to be cool and not have everyone use my font. This is my font. So anyways, looking pretty good. Now, uh, you might not want your font to be so sharp like this. So what you can do is, again, back over here in this text tab, I can add some bevel to this. And that's just going to kind of break those edges so they're not so sharp. Now they are still pretty sharp, so what we could do is add some resolution here. And that'll kind of round those out a little bit. So that's looking pretty good. You don't want to use too much resolution because it'll increase your geometry quite a bit. But that looks pretty good. Now if you're a font snob like myself, one thing you may have noticed is that when we added this bevel, it actually made our text thicker, which you can see over here is really changing the look of that quite a bit. If you're working on a branding project or something like that, you would not want that to happen. So in order to avoid that, I'm gonna set this to uh, a number I know, like 500 thousandths there. So again, it makes it thicker. So to avoid that, we're gonna insert a new value for this offset. And we're gonna make that the same value, but negative. And when we do that, the problem goes away and we're left with our, our font just how it was. So again, this is not a regular object. So if I want to mess with this more, um, like if I wanted to go into edit mode and actually edit these vertices, it wouldn't work. So what we need to do is convert this. 
to a mesh object. So I'm going to press Alt C with it selected, and I want to convert this to a mesh from blah, 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 text. Select that. Nothing happens, which is great. And now when I go into edit mode by pressing tab, you can see we actually have some vertices here we can work with. The geometry is a little bit sloppy, and that's just going to be an issue you face when you're converting um, text objects into mesh. There are some things you can do, but um, one thing I'll just note real quick is that you get a lot of extra vertices. So I'm going to press A to select everything, press W to bring up my specials menu, and I'm going to remove doubles. And you can see we removed almost 6,000 vertices, which um, does help kind of speed things up a little bit, especially in the rendering process. So that's looking pretty good. And, and that's really about it. Now notice if you do change that to a mesh object, you can't go in and edit the text anymore. You'd have to kind of repeat the steps you just did. But they were pretty simple, so if you ever made you know, a spelling error or something like that, then it wouldn't be too hard to, to repeat that. So let's go ahead and render this out. So I'm going to bring back in my uh, seamless backdrop here. Let's maybe drop this down 50% so it doesn't take so long to render. And I'm going to press Shift Z over here in my render view. And that's looking pretty cool. Maybe I want to make this lamp a little bit brighter. So I can bump up that strength, maybe something like 200. And the, the text, let's, uh, let's give that a new material. And um, we can make this, you know, whatever color we want, maybe pink or something like that. That looks pretty cool. Uh, always remember to save. And cool, looking good. So let's go ahead and render that out. That's about it, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for future tutorials or anything you'd like to see me do. If you enjoy the tutorial, please feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see the next video I do. Oh, shit.